Brianna Estrada here all the way from Nashville, Tennessee. How are you doing? Hi, I'm doing good. How are you? Good. Well, we had a little bit of technical difficulties here in the White Lightning, but we are glad we are on the road in Nashville. We have your company. It is Christmas time. It is. And I'm so glad that we're spending uh, Christmas together. And, and we got a lot of things I want to talk about because you have a lot of things going on. If you don't mind, Rayana, if you, if you could, uh, tell everybody who is familiar, maybe who isn't, people who are, but just want to learn more about you. If you don't mind, share a little bit about your story, influences, music, go for it. Absolutely. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Rayana Estrada. I'm a country artist and songwriter from California, now living in Nashville. Um, I got started in music at a really young age, uh, um, you know, learning to sing from musicals and Disney movies and such, but uh, I really, really fell in love with music over listening to 90s country radio. That's where I just fell in love with the music, the storytelling, uh, plus my parents both listened to country music, so it was always, always in the family. Well, great. I mean, I just looking at your story, and I saw who your musical influences were, were, and you have a very, and I think I kind of mentioned this to you before when we were speaking, but you have this 90s country, uh, you know, women, powerful country country song voice and when I first heard it it brought me back because I listened to 90s country and so it's nice. and it's reminding me of those times where you're on in the station wagon listening to old country music so it made me feel good but you, you are and, oh, good. and so I'm, I'm just glad that we were able to one share your story and your music but um you also have you know I know I've told and this has been our season theme here is the underdog and the hurdles and just reading in your website you have your bio and you've had some you know, hard hardships in your life. And I don't, you don't have to go, you can go as deep as you want, but I really wanted to share your story. You have a great story and, and how you got to Nashville, I think is incredible. And I think it definitely an inspiration to, could be an inspiration to a lot of people. If you don't mind sharing a little bit about maybe a oh, hurdle right. that you had in your life and how you dealt with it and, and really how you got to the point where you are now. Yeah, absolutely. I, um, you know, like I said, I fell in love with doing music at a young age and songwriting, um, I used, I grew up on a ranch as well. So I used to, you know, write songs in the motorhome that I grew up in as well. Uh, that's where I kind of got started. And, you know, later on in high school, I would sing the national anthems and sing at the high school rallies. And then after that, I started going to open mics once I graduated and, you know, trying out for American Idol and things like that. And then finally, I moved to Los Angeles to go to Musicians Institute. They have, you know, different programs and I attended the vocal program there. And that's actually where I met my husband, Eric Bickerstaff, who's a guitarist. Uh, and, you know, making that move was very, um, very important to me because it kind of kickstarted everything. But let me rewind because right after I graduated high school, um, you know, of course I was doing, uh, you know, music in my own spare time and, you know, learning to sing and everything. But I, uh, I was working at a restaurant at Chili's as my first job. <laughs> baby back, baby as back, baby back ribs. Chili heads, where you at? <laughs> I was there once too. Yep. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I was working there and I was going to community college and life just, my life just got flipped totally upside down. Um, my dad passed away in 2000 from a heart aneurysm and shortly after that my mom passed away from cancer um, within the same year uh, so I was just turning 19 had no clue <laughs> like most of us didn't have a clue at that age I had no clue what I was doing what was gonna happen and you know the the comfort of home and the two people that you love the most uh, that was uh, that was just taken away so fast and I had never pictured that you know you don't really, uh, when you're young and you're a kid, you just, you know, you believe that your parents are just going to live forever. It never really crosses your mind. And I was definitely one of those kids that I just, I, that wasn't even possible, you know, to me. And so when that happened, of course, you know, my, my heart was broken, uh, still is in some ways. Yeah. And it did open my eyes though to life. So the one, I guess, I can even call it that. The one gift that came out of it was the fact that I saw how quickly life was gone. Um, and that impacted me so strongly. So it did take me a couple of years to find my footing and where I was going to go. But that's what led me to Los Angeles. I always knew I wanted to sing. I you know, was just going to community college. I didn't know what I wanted to do yet. I loved psychology, but it wasn't. I wasn't passionate enough about it. Mm -hmm. And 
once uh, my best friend Melissa helped me find Musicians Institute when I was just freaking out over a biology test that I hated. And I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> uh, I was like, I want to do music, but like, can you do that? Can you go to school for music? And then we found that. And I enrolled and went to that school and never, never looked back. I, you know, put a band together. I started playing shows. I guess for me, like for anyone who's listening and you feel like you're going through a really, you know, hard and pivotal moment, there can be great things on the other side. It won't feel like it for a little while. And, you know, it feels like there's just, there can't be anything good after this, but there can. And you, you have to make the decision. So for me, I knew that I could either go down one road of not making anything happen for myself or turn this tragedy into something positive for me. And in the case of losing someone, you also, you know, have the feeling of you want to make them proud, but you also have to think of what they would want for you mm-hmm. and they wouldn't want you to not live your life. So the best, the best advice I can give is things are going to be hard and it's going to be rough, but you have to, you have to take your life into your own hands and follow whatever dream or path that you're aspiring towards. And you'll find amazing, amazing family and friends along the way. Uh, no, I, I, I truly do I totally agree with you 100% especially when you're doing something that you're passionate about things will fall into place but it is taking that huge giant step that I'd say a majority you know I've been there and I'm sure a lot of people have been there scared of taking just that step that jump it's yeah it can be scary I wanted to just also just you know if you don't mind the the jump that you did make from LA to to Nashville I mean because that also is not easy you know going from really it's from one side of the country to the other, totally different demographic, energy, you name it. How was that move and that transition? Yeah, it was, uh, you know, it was good because I'd been in LA, you know, I, I finished that school. Um, Eric and I finally got married in 2013 after we'd been dating for a couple of years. And it's, I, I loved Los Angeles. You know, I loved living there. Um, I, you know, I just finally hit a time where I was like, I feel like I want to go to Nashville because I had always wanted to. Even when I moved to L.A., I had like an old journal entry where I wrote like, I'm in L.A. finally, uh, but I know that I want to go to Nashville someday. Like, I'm always thinking of that, you know, thinking of the next move. Uh, but I knew that I wasn't ready to go yet. So I did what I wanted to do in L.A. and I came to we came to visit Nashville to see you know could we live here is this somewhere that we'd like and uh, we already had a couple friends here for music school um that showed us around and we were just like let's do it because it's another one of those you know another one of those choices that you're like well i could stay in la forever and wonder what it's like to live in nashville or i can go live in nashville and then always pack up and turn around if i feel like it but we didn't feel like it so (laughs) we're still here um i they're both very different cities as far as like music goes and i'm sure you know just from living you know like in austin Mm -hmm. that you know every different different things about them they're not necessarily better or worse just different and the thing i love about nashville though is that it's um it's just it's filled with talented songwriters and talented musicians and it's a really really nice community here of people and you find you find your people you know along the way here and it just pushes you to want to be better all the time um and as a songwriter this is just somewhere that i wanted to be and now i really love living here oh that's great no and um and congratulations i mean just doing what you love and continuing to do that. And I think it's uh, it's inspiring to a lot of us. So thank you very much for sharing. Oh yeah. yeah. And I mean, it's, you know, it's, there's always hard times too. It's not all just like, every day is just, you're <laughs> living your dream and it's perfect. <laughs> you know, like you're always trying to figure it out and you're always trying to make it work. And um, I'd say the, the one thing is just, you have to just be yourself in whatever you're doing because doesn't matter like I said there's a bunch of talented songwriters here but there is there's only one version of you or what you do so you have to stay true to that while you're on this journey and worry more about what you're doing and why you're doing it rather than always trying to get to some destination of it so Rihanna you're telling me that life's not perfect right now <laughs> I mean it's pretty good <laughs> oh we'll take I mean, it <laughs> life is good good life is well, you I know, think I think we could. Where I'm sitting in this chair. In this very second. <laughs> well, we could tell you got a huge smile on your face. We love that you're here with us on Christmas. Uh, you tell your husband that I appreciate taking the time away from him. Oh, absolutely.
absolutely. Okay. He's working on music in the next room. Okay, he's a cool. as well, so he's just a mad scientist and on the computer. All right. Well, <laughs> Rihanna Estrada, are you ready to enter the lightning round and the white lightning? Okay. Yes. All right. Well, I'm we'll ready. see. All right. Let's pull over and then... Um, I want to get into, so here, we'll pull over right now on the white lightning, get ready for the lightning round. But before that, you know, this entire season that uh, we've been promoting, uh, excuse me, promoting local businesses, uh, we know how tough it's been for obviously the musicians and that uh, circle, but also for the bars, the pubs, and just the people around that are helping us out. Is there a place, is there a, a business, a local business that you want to give a shout out today? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's so many, honestly, that I want to shout out. <laughs> But um, I guess uh, I'd have to say um, I would probably shout out um, the restaurant Sunda that I was working at before this all happened. Um, they're Southeast Asian food, um, wonderful team there. Uh, the owner, his family's Filipino, so he's kind of done a whole mix of you know, Filipino, Vietnamese, um, Japanese influence, and Chinese influence, so there's just such great food there. Um, I would also uh, shout out local coffee shops. There's three in particular that I'm always drinking coffee from. Uh, Crema, which okay. is an amazing coffee shop here. Barista Parlor. Uh, and also uh, Retrograde, which is down the street from my house. And their coffee is strong and amazing. But yeah, I know it's it's been tough for local businesses, for sure. So I know that anytime you go in, even just buying, you know, one coffee, like every now and again, I feel like really makes a difference for them. Or going in and ordering, you know, like one you know takeout sushi roll or something from sunda or somewhere so uh when you were so you were a waitress there oh yeah so what <laughs> what's I spent my time in an apron my <laughs> oh, i was a terrible waiter but we won't get into that but really oh uh, i would forget orders and i would uh i was i worked at an irish pub and a huge family came in once and i completely forgot to put in their order it was a disaster but that's a whole nother story oh, you pocketed the order it happens oh i had uh, just I had to beg the cooks to help me. Oh, I just begged them. Um, but <laughs> so, but I, but I love Southeast Southeast Asian food. So I have to wonder what is the best thing on the menu in your opinion. Ooh, oh man, that's hard because since they do have so many different things, um, I mean, I really love the Red Dragon sushi roll. Okay, that one's really good. It has shrimp tempura. It has unagi. Um, I like, let me see if I remember. <laughs> uh, it has uh, shrimp tempura, unagi, it has like eel sauce and um, spicy tuna on the top. Yes. And like, just, it's like just everything in like one really great bite. Oh, I love it. I love sushi. And I love, I was wondering pho or pho, but I love a hot bowl of pho or pho, depending on oh, who yes. you are. Oh my gosh, there's another place here. Sorry, just one more since you said that. Go a for ramen it. place oh, uh, yeah. called Otaku Ramen. Okay. That's really great too, especially because it's getting cold now. Yes. So good. Yes. All uh, right. Tailgate pizza. Oh, here we go. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm gonna give shout outs <laughs> as best as I can with their uh, Instagram handles and and um, possibly websites. But so we do appreciate that, and we appreciate so far everything that you know the story and and the shout outs, but. Things are going to get a little harder in the lightning round. It's not going to be, you know, the Christmas holiday cheer for you right now. So I want to see oh, if you can no. handle it. <laughs> I'm going to try, you know. Okay. I'll take any challenge. Uh, Let's do it. Okay. Well, well, we might maybe just keep take it a little a notch down a little bit. All right. Lightning round. Here we go. Because I said the 90s is a huge influence, 90s country specifically, and I noticed, you know, you do have some country artists that I'm familiar with, but I wanted to ask you this. Leanne Rhymes. Or Sarah Evans? Ooh, that's tough because they're both really amazing singers. And I definitely grew up singing both of their songs. Um, I'd have to probably say, though, I'd probably say Leanne Rhymes. Okay. Um, just because I, you know, sang a lot of her songs. Yeah, I, you in the bio you have, I mean, from Dixie Chicks to Leanne Rhymes, but just like, and, and that's why I hope before we end this episode that we get a song because I'm really loving this new Christmas song that you have, but I'll let you plug that here in a second. Rihanna, if, oh, yeah. we, if we were driving from coast to coast, what musician would you want as your co-pilot? Oh my gosh, <laughs> so many. <laughs> um, yeah, that's actually so hard. I would, I mean... Probably Miranda Lambert. Oh yeah, the attitude. I mean, can you handle that? Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I feel like uh, I 
feel like she would just be a lot of fun and be super real and have so many amazing stories. Plus, you know, I listened and learned from her music too. Yeah, I'd probably say her or um, obviously I'd always pick Tom Petty for any questions that you give me. <laughs> oh, well, absolutely. But, you know, um, Miranda Lambert, we all love her here in Texas from a small town, but uh, she represents us very well. But so appreciate that. The Tom Petty answer is great too. Cause I mean, the stories, and not only that, he's a musician that you say, and I had a chance to go see him and I at, unfortunately didn't. I ended up not going to the concert and I really, really now regret it. But just listening to the amount of stories I'm sure that man had is probably pretty incredible. Yeah, oh yeah. All right, we're on. If, if we were uh, on this road trip, whether it was with Tom Petty or Miranda Lambert, and we were going through your phone, through a <laughs> playlist, is there a band, a song, a musician that would surprise us? Um, hmm. I don't know if I have one that would be, like, surprising. I really love listening to, like, Scottish or Irish folk music or instrumental music. Okay. That's something that always loved i've always had something like that either like you know back in the day on my ipod or like on a cd it's just very yeah i just i love irish music it's just more like instrumental music okay just irish you know like fiddle yes and, the pipes and the drums know, and just the... like flute and yeah and bagpipes like i just i love it very cool <laughs> so i feel like people would not maybe expect that always from me. <laughs> I, I have, just because I'm, I'm a big fan of that as well, there's a couple good, uh, mu well, if you listen, if you like like scores of movies, like Braveheart has a good one. Uh, Far and Away is yes, also... Oh my God, that's one of my favorite movies. Yeah, yes. Far and Away is another good one if you like just old Irish, you know, folk music. Um, Waking Ned Divine is, is a lot of fun too because that's kind of the 90s and they have some new 90s Irish music and also some old... Irish tunes, but uh, definitely check them out. They're, it's my favorite. I love I love that stuff. I love the answer. We really appreciate it. Because it's a Christmas episode, we want to get into the Christmas theme here. So I have to ask you, movie-wise, we're going to go a little old, a bit of uh, the newer age as well. So Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer or Elf, if you had to pick one? Rudolph. Rudolph? Okay. And then... I would say Rudolph if I had to pick, but I haven't watched that in many years. Yeah. So. Well, I don't think they play it on TV anymore. So, uh, because, so I'm hoping before we happen to finish this episode, and I hate to kick you out because I love this song that you have called On C Christmas, right? On Christmas. So I wanted to talk, you talk about the lyrics in this song as, you know, just traditions that your family and you and going back and all these thing, fun things that you would do on Christmas. Do you have any, I guess, favorite past or current traditions that you'd like to share? Say, I mean, in the past, it was definitely, you know, setting up the tree together while some of these movies like we were just talking about Rudolph like they'd always play the same movies every year on TV you kind of knew what to expect and I, I I loved that idea that when the holidays came around you had the same decorations um and for me honestly it's just that everyone was together in one place like my whole my you know my parents and I were were there and that's what I associate Christmas with so for me even now I don't really care what we do or necessarily what we watch as long as it's just us hanging out that's all i really want from Christmas. yeah well and i know with a lot of people everywhere is you know it's it's gonna it's a tough year unfortunately people aren't Absolutely. some people families aren't going to be together but you know in the positive light there's some good things that are going to happen i know it and uh, i'm just glad that you're able to share there's some new traditions that possibly that now you can make because of these circumstances i, uh -huh. I, I want to get to the song but it, before we get to that i want to ask um how do we listen to you how do we follow you on social media yeah um you can find me on everything on social media I just type in my name, Rihanna Estrada, and I'm on, you know, um, Instagram, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, sometimes. Um, <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> but uh, still learning. mostly on, I'd say mostly Instagram and Facebook if you want to follow me. Very cool. And then I know you do have, so your new single, and what, do you have any plans right now, I guess, currently, do you have a, a, a schedule that you're, you know, releasing certain items and certain things to, to us, the fans, that you want to share? Yes. Um... Yeah, so you can find my music as well. It's on Spotify, Apple Music, you know, everything that you listen to music on. Um, but yeah, I'm working on uh, new music for 2021. I do have uh, a new single that's going to be coming out in the beginning of the year, most likely around February, early March, and followed by a music video. Um, it's very important for me to tell the whole story, so I love to 
you know, share the song with you. I also love to share the music video and kind of the meaning behind these things because just something that's always been very important to me as an artist. If anybody hasn't, and maybe you haven't, if you haven't watched her video for On Christmas, it's done really well. I know that you were just telling me it was you and your friend, I'm sure on a shoestring budget, like we all are now, but just done yeah. very, very well. Lots of fun, you, you know, you know, on a, a 90s, 80s recorder type of feel to it. So I loved it. Unfortunately, Rihanna, we got to get going and we got to oh, kick no. you out. Yeah, it's I, I got to make it home for Christmas dinner. Yeah. And I got a, <laughs> I got a long drive. My wife's going to be angry. But before we leave, we, all we ask is, is there a song that you could play for us? And if there is one, could you play On Christmas for us? Yes. Absolutely. I would love to play On Christmas. This song is very, uh, very special to me, not only you know because I'm sharing my story, but I also know that there are so many other people out there who have a festive heartache. And I know that this year is, is difficult. So if anyone is dealing with the, the loss of someone now or from the past, I just send you all of the love and I hope you have a very, very Merry Christmas and Happy Holiday wherever you are. Well, Rihanna Estrada, thank you so much. We're going to uh, go for it whenever you're ready. This is on Christmas. Go for it. was great that was such a good song i love it uh it's gonna be one of my new favorite christmas songs every year i'm gonna make sure that i i, I listen to it i'm also gonna add that to our new oh. playlist that we have called joyride that you can find on spotify so anybody wanting to re-listen to it and hoping to find her will also have that song on christmas on our spotify playlist called joyride rihanna strada thank you so much um, just, you know, before I let you go, is there a way that maybe we can follow you and, uh, you know, for future shows? Is that, do we follow you on Spotify, your website? 
for any future shows coming along? Yeah, I would say, you know, check back to my social media. I'm always posting um, when I have new shows, whether they're an online show or playing a festival or something like that. I would love for you to come be a part of the whole journey. Well, great. Make sure you follow her, you know, YouTube subscribe. That's always important. Facebook likes. But uh, thank you so much, Rihanna Estrada. I hope you have a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year's. And I know as a, you know, the music industry is going to turn around and we are going to skyrocket, you know, for 2021. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Well, thank you so much. I hope, Thank you. you know, I really appreciate you having me. I uh, really appreciate it, and uh, we hope to see you soon. <laughs> yes, sounds good. Bye.